Hello, my name is Gray. And my name is Crystal. And this is Busty Asian Beauties, a supernatural commentary podcast where I, someone who has seen this show several times, and I, someone who only knows about Supernatural through social media, discuss every single episode of Supernatural from start to finish. Also, we are both Asian. Both Asian! For today's episode, we will be discussing Season 3, Episode 8, A Very Supernatural Christmas. Written by Jeremy Carver. Directed by J. Miller Tobin. I did not know this was written by Jeremy Carver. I, I also I did it not was know. pretty good, but it was written by Jeremy it's... Carver. So actually, I... maybe it was bad. I had so much fun watching this. And you know how like back in season one, I would cry at every episode? Yeah. And then season two, I just stopped. Yeah. And then season 3 is like, whatever. I cried this episode. Oh, Yeah! I was like, at the end scene, I was like, crying. So, that was super Aww. fun. Yeah. So, it was effective in that way. And then the rest of the episode is also effective in that it's entertaining. Yeah. Like, I was not bored. So, yeah. Oh, when? The... The, the the violent scenes this episode are well and truly violent, and I love that. Oh yeah, I watched this with my ex-fiance because I was at her house earlier today, and like, yeah, she's a big fan of fingernail removal, and so yeah. am I, so yeah, that was fun. Yeah, I love it when Sam Winchester is hurt and crying and screaming. <laughs> yeah. I, and I do I, mean that sexually. <laughs> it's fascinating to me because um, they do it this episode, and then actually, like many many seasons later, in Last Holiday, they it's kind of a holiday episode, so it's kind of a right. Christmas episode in a way. Um, they also remove his fingernail, so I like have call heard back. This. Yeah. yeah. So, and it's like a seemingly nice older woman in both cases with a cheerful disposition. So yeah, it really is the same episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That one was written by... It was uh... the guy who wrote Scooby Natural, I know. No, Scooby Natural was written by outsiders. Yeah, no, I think Last Holiday was also written by an outsider. No, it was written by sure? like fucking... Uh, no, it's not. I was gonna say it was written by the guy who wrote um, the one with the exploding pumpkin under the sun line. What's that one? I, the season 14 oh, episode? Oh, his head exploded. Oh, the peace of mind. <laughs> Why are we like this? Why are we talking like this? Let's stop talking about this because it doesn't matter. I'm gonna cut it all out. It was. I looked it up, and Last Holiday was written by Jeremy Adams, who wrote Scooby Natural, partnering oh, with James you. Craig. I hate you. I love being right about everything all the time. <laughs> okay. So, Crystal, what did you know about this episode before going in? Uh, I think I mostly saw a gift set of the final scene with the eggnog. And specifically when Dean says fuel for me and fuel for my baby. Because I remember seeing that before I knew Dean and seeing that he had like a little like like mark on his cheek and being like, oh, that's kind of cute. But now I hate him. So it's no. not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I think I also had heard that, what, like Jared Padalecki spiked the eggnog. For real, for real beforehand. Geez. Yeah, I didn't and that's know that. Why Jensen Ackles reacted that way when he drank it. That's fun. Yeah. I mean, it's Jared Padalecki, <laughs> though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, always the Jared Padalecki. I'm mm. very proud that we have not mentioned his name in this podcast for like a whole season. 
Huh. Up until yeah, now. I think so. Because in the past, whenever I got our transcripts on our dash, it would be like, this post contains filtered yeah! content. Yeah! And Jared Padalecki. And it's because it's Jared Padalecki. <laughs> Well, to be fair, I have, like, almost all actors, um, well, at least the main trio, like, oh, yeah, yeah, filtered, Same. so, like, it's filtered for all that. It's so funny, because I also think I have Benny and, like, Crowley, and, like, <laughs> like, so- <laughs> yeah, because you're a hater who hates <laughs> when Dean has other boyfriends. I'm literally a hater, and I have them muted, and whenever we mention them, they also get filtered out of my life. So So real. So, good luck to this episode, and its visibility. Yeah. Rip. So, (laughs) we, uh, we'll, we'll start now? Yeah. Okay. So, we start in this, like, house in the suburbs, you know? And it's a family who's celebrating Christmas. And my initial thought here was that it was like the day before Christmas. Because what happens next is one of the uncles or like, I don't know, this guy in the family. Is he a grandpa? The grandfather. Puts on a Santa costume and Mm -hmm. like does this whole thing where he like um, calls in a way the little kid so that the little kid can see him but he pretends that the little kid is not there and he like places the gifts blah 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 and then uh sounds kept happening on the roof and the kid is like oh my god the reindeers they're coming to get santa but really it's a monster what happens is the guy gets taken by monsters up the roof up, uh, up the chimney and he like gets like decapitated or whatever like he gets torn to pieces it's implied that he gets torn to pieces because mm-hmm. the scene ends with like a foot falling down the chimney yep and it's blood crusted yeah dry blood so that's fun uh, apparently it's revealed later that this was three days or like four days before christmas i guess which is so right. funny to me. Like, why are you as a man dressing up as Santa Claus five days before Christmas? But I feel like it. this scene does have... Oh, okay. It says in the opening thing, it says it was Seattle, Washington one year ago. Oh. So, Well, we're right. stupid. <laughs> Present day. <laughs> It's five days before Christmas, but this yeah. scene happened a year ago. On Christmas Day. Yes. Well, there goes my whole, why is he dressing up as Santa before Christmas Eve? But, yeah. No, it's it's Christmas. He's just being a good grandfather. Yeah, and he's dead now. Rip to R.I.P. That guy. Grandpa. So, the title card looks like shit. Yeah. <laughs> it looks absolutely horrendous. Like, and... there's what, like, badly photoshopped clip art, like, Santa hats and candy canes around it. I mean, it, I think it's supposed to be intentional. Like, it's not supposed to be pretty. Yeah, it's supposed but to it be is... cartoony fun or whatever. Yeah, but it is still ugly, even at those standards, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. I love this episode because of the whole Christmas theme. And is Christmas a big, th- is that a big thing for you? Oh my god, Crystal. I'm Filipino. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's tracks. very big. It's very big. Uh like I don't know if this is like actually something that is like recorded in some way. Or, like, it's something people just say here. But, like, uh, the the thing people say is that the Philippines has the longest Christmas season in the whole, whole world. Because, uh-huh. like, we start celebrating Christmas as soon as the bear months drop. And then, like, until February. So, like, <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> it's very until long. February? It's very February? Yeah. We had, it, it like... It passed. It's over. Yeah. 
I it concerns me that like other countries have this like Boxing Day where it's like the day after Christmas and then they pack up the Christmas stuff. Yeah. Once well, we had an actual Christmas tree, like, mm-hmm. like the beautiful one, the yeah. tree from like yeah, the actual tree. Mm-hmm. And we did not put that down until my dad's birthday in March. So like, <laughs> it was dry. <laughs> oh, like it wasn't a live tree. Like it wasn't. It plastic? wasn't a live tree. It wasn't a live tree. Nice. We got it. Like the reasoning was like we were not able to put it up early because like the alive tree comes from like somewhere else. So it like arrives in our house like a couple days before Christmas. So we're like, let's just keep it up for three more months. It's yeah, fine. That makes sense. Yeah. That was so difficult to dispose. Because like we don't have alive trees in the Philippines, like for Christmas. Mm. For obvious right. reasons. It's a tropical country. But yeah, that was so hard to dispose. Yeah. I think we keep ours up like until mid January, so it's a little yeah. bit after. Christmas is super big here. And yeah. I, I, I love Christmas episodes because of that. Because I'm like, oh, you just like me for real. And I think that's a big reason why I got super emotional towards the end. Because like, don't uh-huh. you feel like every time you go on a holiday and you're like, oh my god, the mortality is looming yeah. over everything. Because like, who knows if next year we'll all be together like this because yeah. someone might die. So, like, I felt very emotional. Yeah, I mean, Christmas isn't that big for me anymore, but, like, when I was a kid, definitely, I feel like this would have hit quite hard. Okay, so now we cut to the present day, and we're in Ypsilanti, Michigan, which is a city-slash-town that I know of because there's a Sufjan Stevens song about it. Um, which is a good song, I recommend it. Uh, so, there's someone being interviewed, there's some woman who, her husband got kidnapped or whatever, and Sam and Dean are interviewing her about the situation. Uh, and, you know, she's not doing well because she's like, if he was kidnapped, then why wasn't there a ransom demanded? Why is he just gone? And she's like, it's three days till Christmas. What am I supposed to tell our daughter? And Sam just goes, we're very sorry. And then he leave. literally said, that's not our problem. <laughs> yeah, like, rip to you, but I'm different. Yeah, uh, and we also find out that they found a tooth inside of the chimney. So, you know, something dragged him up the chimney, and he definitely died mid-drag. So, yeah. they're inside a motel, uh, and Sam has basically a red yarn wall of photos of demons all around him. Uh, and he's looking up like, I don't know, Krampus, Evil Santa, like, I don't know what his Google search terms are for these images. <laughs> and, yeah, Dean comes in, Sam makes a Mary Poppins reference where he says that, uh, it's a serial killing chimney sweep named Dick Van Dyke. Great name, of course. Yes. Uh, and Dean doesn't know this reference. Like, which... I think maybe, I know we made fun of him a lot in bedtime stories, but maybe the fact that the two things that he doesn't know are, like, children's media implies that, I don't know, like, I don't know, what what do Dean girls say? That Sam got a childhood he that never Dean, had a childhood. yeah, that <laughs> Dean never got, and Sam was John's favorite, and John cuddled him. And showed him Disney movies, and then he yelled at Dean to go clean a gun. <laughs> like, you know, whatever imaginary I mean, childhood to be fair, Dean I girls also, created for him. Yeah. I also, to be fair, I also don't know who Dick Van Dyke is. Yeah. Like, I know the name because, like, of all the jokes, but, like, right. I don't know who he is. Oh, I know he's he- in Mary Poppins and he has an ugly English accent, but I knew that after. So, like, 
Prior Prior to ugly the English, or do you yeah. use ugly English accent to mean Cockney? <laughs> no, I mean like his accent was bad in the Mary Poppins okay, movie. Okay, but yeah, I don't, I don't remember his accent. I mean, I actually <laughs> didn't watch the Mary Poppins movie. I just know like maybe a tiny bit about it because when I was a kid, I read Julie Andrews' autobiography or something instead of watching Mary Poppins. Um, yeah. but yeah. I don't know. Well, Sam has seen it, and he and Dean are always in the same room, so I don't know. Weird. Who knows? This may have been another situation where Sam was like, I want to watch Mary Poppins because I think Julie Andrews is a good singer, and Dean went, okay, homo, and then went over to the bathroom There's to cover so his many... ears. There's so many okay homo scenes in this in episode! This episode. <laughs> Literally okay, homo. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So basically, Dean has found out that someone else got kidnapped this month, and he also got dragged up the chimney. And Sam goes, "I have an idea, but it's gonna sound crazy." And Dean's like, "What could sound crazy to me?" Sam says, "Evil Santa." And Dean says that is crazy, which, is it? Is it? They've dealt with weird shit before. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what's wrong with these guys, but they treat it like it's super weird because, like, how can there be evil Santa <laughs> if there's no good Santa? <laughs> Also, Sam says his iconic line, every yeah. culture, baby, <laughs> every culture, there's an anti-Santa in every culture. Which is so <laughs> funny, because that implies that there is, like, a like a non-anti-Santa in every culture. There's, like, a Santa in, like, five cultures, like, max, I think. Love that. Yeah. We can, you know what? Is it too late to start an every culture account? Maybe I, we can like look back to in our transcripts like, transcript. for the word yeah. culture. We could yeah, exactly. do that. We could. Yeah. But I my laptop doesn't work right now, so I No, I'll let's start it next time he says every culture. Okay. So, look forward to that, Mapod listeners. Yeah, so Sam says this whole every culture line because, you know, there's a lot of evil Santas in, like, he gives three examples. Yeah. Uh, there's <laughs> there's all that. sorts of lore. He also says that's what the lore says at one point. So real. Yeah. And it's fascinating to me that he was like, in every culture there's an anti clause. Yeah. Also, the only way that this Anticlaus shows up in every single culture is that he's the brother of Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, out of Sam and Dean, who's Santa and who's the evil Santa? I think Sam should be the evil Santa, just for funsies. Yeah, just for fun. I feel like I feel like Sam is a bit more judgmental, mm. so like he'll he'll be able to be more petty in terms of the naughty or nice list. Right, so you think he would go around and punish the bad kids? I mean, I feel like Dean's track record with children meaning <laughs> is yeah. probably- I think Dean's meaner to children, and I feel like Dean might have a more punishy mindset, but I don't know, Sam's views on justice oh are God. also strange. There's this one episode of Supernatural where they end up in a high school. Remember that? Oh, and, and Dean like sexually harasses school. teenage girls or something. Is that... No. Does he like, make a comment about dodgeball. lockers? No. It's okay. like, I, I have no idea. And if you're right, I'm going to be so sad. <laughs> but, uh, like, what I remember is they're playing dodgeball and he, like, mm. throws a ball at some kid and the kid, like, doubles over. <laughs> So, <laughs> oh yeah, I think that Dean's gotta be the evil Santa. Yeah, yeah. So, 
Oh, Dean goes, like, Santa doesn't have a brother. There is no Santa. And Sam says, yeah, I know. You're the one who told me that in the first place. Remember? (laughs) Such a long, sad look between them. There's no way. And we learned later that that's because it happened on a really bad night. Like, it was bundled with a lot of things. But in this moment, it's hilarious. (laughs) I laughed out loud. Like, the moment that scene happened, I was like, this is my time of Supernatural episode. <laughs> like, after they explained it later, that, like, the reason why he learned that Santa is fake is because blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It's a miserable night. I was like, oh, damn it. I wish it was just, like, <laughs> Dean just told him one day, yeah, Santa doesn't exist. And Sam, like, internalized it, like, super lonely moment. Yeah. How did you learn that Santa didn't exist? Oh, I never. Oh, that's good. In Santa, like <clears throat> I, I like, I didn't receive gifts for Christmas from mm-hmm. my parents because we were not like rich when I was young. Yeah. But now we're rich, and I have a little sister. And mm-hmm. right, so she's getting the Santa. So mythology. she gets the gifts, but she doesn't get the Santa. Oh, it's okay. It's like, like my parents are still like. We got that for you. There's no Santa. And right. like, like, they don't want Santa to get the, the credit. credit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. I think in fourth grade, there was, you know, there were all these awful rumors going around my classroom that Santa wasn't real. And I went, like, on, like, a two-hour <laughs> Googling spree about it. And I think I was literally crying by the end. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, I immediately turned that around by when my sister was 12 and still believed in Santa. I told her and then she was crying. That is amazing. <laughs> and that's what generational trauma is. <laughs> That's actually, like, so fascinating to me. You actually did believe it? Yes. That's Fully. wonderful. That's fascinating. Because my sister and I would devise little tests, right? Like, we would, like, write, like, a note to Santa and then, like, hide it somewhere. We were like, our parents will never find this. And then we would get a response and we'd be like, oh my god, that was Santa for real? He just happens to have my mom's handwriting? Wild. <laughs> Your parents put so much effort no, into really giving you did. such a magical childhood. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. I think, like, the... the I don't know, actually, if my little sister believes it. Because, like, my parents were like, oh, we got that for you. Mm-hmm. But, like, she still, like, jokes around. That, like, oh, it's from Santa, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, prob- like, I think there's a part of her that still believes. Like, for example, one time... She wrote a note that was like, I want a little kitten for Christmas. And then mm-hmm. like a couple of months later, we got a kitten. She was yeah. like, this is Santa's gift for me in the middle of summer. So. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's a magical thing. It sure is. Uh, and so Dean tells Sam that both victims visited the same Santa's village location before they got kidnapped, so they head there. Yeah. So they go to a Santa village. And I was like, this is part of the plot that like it the it's like the middle of summer. <laughs> it looks like it's the middle of summer. Yeah. Right? It's part of the plot, but like I didn't know it at this point. So I was like, God damn, they're not even trying it anymore. <laughs> Like, they're not even trying to make this look festive. And then, like, maybe it's supposed to look dingy, but, like, throw a little something in there. Mm-hmm. But they do acknowledge it that, like, if we're paying this much money, they should have gotten fake snow. And they paid $10? That's insane. Yeah, that's a lot to get into that To get into that shitty-ass place. <laughs> but they enter, and Sam is, like, just walking around. They're just bantering. And then... Dean goes forth and leaves Sam behind. And he sees a reindeer and gets a flashback. And the funny thing is, there's no reindeer in the flashback. 
Yeah. (laughs) What triggers this? He saw a reindeer and he was like, huh. Remember when I had an event in my life that had no reindeers whatsoever? It's a great angle where he's just staring down the reindeer. It's funny because it looks like the start of a comedic scene. Yeah. And then you get this saddest flashback (laughs) of your life. It really is. Yeah, also, like, earlier when Sam and Dean are, are arguing, I think Sam says... Yeah, Dean says, we had some great Christmases, and Sam says, whose childhood are you talking about? And I liked yeah. that exchange a lot. I like the very different ways that they experience their shitty childhoods and the various ways that they've chosen to process them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, back... So, in in the flashback, it's 1991 Christmas Eve, and... Dean is like 12 and Sam is, you know, four years younger. And uh, Sam is wrapping up a present for John in newspaper. And Dean asks, like, where did you get the money? And he's like, no, I didn't steal the money. I got this from Uncle Bobby and he said it was a special gift. Sweet. Do you think Bobby gave it to Sam to have? No, he said specifically that he gave it to Sam to give to John. Oh, I see. Maybe Sam was like, I want to give my dad a present. Mm-hmm. And Bobby was like, oh, here we go. Here's something you can give him. Also, I'm very curious about this. Yeah. If he didn't know at this point that they were doing hunting. Right. How is Bobby explained to him? Um, here's her dad's best friend who happens to have a house full of occult objects and guns. Yeah, you know, he's just got some weird hyper fixations. Don't bother him about yeah. it. <laughs> Our dad's boyfriend is so weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, in, sorry, to talk about Interview with the Vampire, but in Interview with the Vampire, <laughs> Claudia calls Louie Daddy Lou, and she calls his boyfriend Lestat Uncle Les. So yeah, uncle does mean your dad's boyfriend in this situation. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, when they were younger, they called Bobby Uncle Bobby. Yeah. That's sweet. so sweet. That's so sweet. Yeah. Is it common? Like, if, like, at what age do you outgrow the uncle? Huh, I don't know, because I feel like most of my parents' friends are, like, Chinese, so I call them, like, Shu Shu or Ai, which I guess means aunt or uncle. But I don't know yeah. what, like, the English terms that people use for their friends' I think people just say friends. first names, right, in the U.S.? Like, even if they're a generation above you? I, that's like for me like you're one year older you're already you you already have something before your name you know so like I don't un- like it makes me uneasy yeah, to think I that like, like if someone's older I just say hey Bobby like that, that doesn't fly what are you doing yeah I mean I guess I did call like my like 50 year old co-workers and stuff by their first names over the summer so oh my god that's the weirdest thing about yeah. having a job. Like, you uh-huh. call your co-workers who are all older than you by their first name. And it's like, your boss, you call it... Like, I, 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 like why am I not calling you sir? This is so <laughs> weird. Yeah. yeah. I feel like professors go by their first names too now. It's strange. Yeah. But I'm... I'm I've gotten used to it mostly, I think. Uh, what happens next? And Sam asks whether John is going to be around for Christmas, and Dean's like, Oh, yeah, he's going to be. Of course, he is. He's just on business right now. And Sam is questioning, What kind of stuff? What kind of business? And Dean just evades every question. And Sam yeah. goes, Nobody ever tells me anything, which did make me so sad. Mm. Because you ever feel like that? You ever feel like nobody tells you anything? I feel like that's a common experience for people who are like younger in the family. 
Like, yeah. I'm so stupid because nobody tells me anything. And I relate to Sam in that way. So I felt mm. an emotion, a singular emotion in this yeah. scene. Uh, I don't know how much I relate, but it did make me very sad. Yeah, it's sad. And uh, Sam, like, s- keeps on asking. Like, is that a spy? And Dean goes, yeah, he's James Bond. <laughs> and he asks, like, why do we keep moving around so much? Uh, and Dean goes, yeah, because everybody is so fucking sick of you in your face. That's why we keep moving around. <laughs> he's so mean. And at some point, he shouts at Sam. And, like, I, I get it. Know. When you're That's around so... each other that much, you are going to shout at each other. And it's going to get miserable. But, like, because like he's older, like I feel like you should, you know, control yourself a little bit more. Stuff like that. My man. Try to be thought, the bigger person. My man What's thought your main during the scene is that oh, it's sweet when child actors try to be angry. No, oh, he's <laughs> angry. He's, he's trying angry. to be angry. Don't yeah. ever talk about mom again. <laughs> Yeah, that's what happens next. <laughs> Sam goes, is that why we never talk about dun, dun, dun. mom? And then Dean goes, don't ever talk about mom again. And then he storms out the room to s- and says that he's going out. And he leaves. And mm-hmm. that's the end of our first flashback. Yeah. Baby Sam is so cute. I know I said this the last time we saw him. He is yeah. so important to me. He really is. And this is like, a different he, he's than Sam. The last one. He's, he's that's Sam. literally this is Sam. Sam. He's literally Sam. This What's one this is Sam literally Sam. Again? Like Colin Colin something? Ford? Yeah. Yeah. No, this is yeah. literally him. There's this one Oh no, I think this is the the Dean guy who was like he's twenty six the day the show ended or something like that. That was super fun because he's twenty six, dude. Oh yeah. Dean comes back. Sam gets snapped out of his memories, and they go to this guy who's wearing a Santa costume, and they're making this guy out to be a creep. Yeah. I feel bad for Santas because, like, they are made out to be creeps. I feel like mall mm-hmm. Santas. They're just doing their job. Yeah. <laughs> They're being paid to do it. But I don't know. Maybe I'm too naive. What happens is uh, there's a kid there and then he goes to Santa and Santa is like, oh, are you good this year? Ha 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 ha. Fun. And somebody approaches Sam and Dean and is like, do you have any kids? We'll take the kids and we'll put them on Santa's lap. And... <laughs> Dean says like no but oh uh, my, my my brother here it's his lifelong dream <laughs> and the woman goes no children above 12 please <laughs> it's so good no children above 12 so real and she pauses and... before 12 like she's trying yeah. to figure out how old Sam is She's like, like he's what is probably this? at least thirteen. Yeah, maybe he's just a really tall thirteen-year-old. Yeah. And Sam goes like, "No, we're he's just kidding. We came here to watch." <laughs> and then like the woman takes this very poorly, and she's Yo. like, "Oh, you creep." Yeah. And yeah, Sam and Dean end up following uh, the guy because he had a smell to him. Like, he mm. smelled like candy. And apparently, yeah. that's like a sign of the monster they're hunting. So they follow him to his RV. Or his house, I think. Is that a house? It's just small. Okay. okay. I'm so <laughs> judgmental. I'm like, <laughs> if your house is small, it must be an RV. Yeah, but they follow him to his house. Yeah, so they're spying on him. And Dean starts going like, hey, Sam, why do you hate Christmas so much? Like, we had a few bumpy holidays when we were kids. And Sam goes, bumpy? So, yeah, more of that. And Dean says, like, that was then. We'll do it right this year. 
And Sam says that he just doesn't really want to be involved in Christmas this year. Dean can do it himself. And, you know, Dean's like, well, that will suck and be lonely. So inside of the house, they hear, like, a woman yell or something. Uh, and because they haven't seen Home Alone, they don't understand that this is a television. So... They run into the house with their guns. Sam cracks a joke about how, oh, you love Christmas so much, but you're going to have to kill Santa. <laughs> oh, you and... don't know that this guy's evil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeez. You're literally busting in guns blazing. I know, right? Uh, they go in, and this guy is not torturing anybody. He's just on his couch with a gigantic bong. Like, this one puts Andy's to shame, honestly, I think. Uh, and he's watching some, like, Christmas-themed porn, I think. Yeah. Uh, and the Santa guy goes like, what the fuck are you doing here? And they try to come up with an excuse, and then Dean starts singing... Silent Night to pretend to be a cor- a- shit, why did I forgot the- Caroler. 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 Yeah. Um, Is caroling a big deal in the US? It's never, like, happened, like, around me. Oh, I think when I it's was in never- choir in high school, actually, I think we did go caroling once. House to house? But I don't- no, it wasn't house to house, that felt way too intrusive. I think it was just, like- in, like, areas with shops. <laughs> Caroling is a very big deal here. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, when you're a kid, you go caroling, and it's, like, super fun. And oh, you have yeah. maracas and, like, the thing, and you sing outside with maracas. And it's always a treat because the people who are rich in the household, in the neighborhood, give you tons of money. So, super oh, nice. fun. nice. You get money for and, caroling? Yeah, that's the whole point. And, like, the songs are, like... Like, it's a mix of, like... It's not, like, Carol of the Bells. But, like, it's, like, uh, like Filipino Christmas songs, right? Mm. And then you sing those. And some of them are, like... um, Like, re- literally, like, asking for money. And then, like, they give you money... And then you have a special song for after they give you the money. <laughs> like, so thanks for fun. giving me money song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that like, is fun. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, thank you. That's the song. And then, so like, true. if they don't give you money, there's, like, a song that you sing also. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> you are such a cheapskate, you horrible person. <laughs> like, that's the message of the song. It's in Filipino, so I can't sing it, but, like... It's 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 wonderful. I love it so much. Yeah, I think yeah. there are caroling songs in English that demand that you give them figgy pudding. Figgy pudding, yeah. Yeah, but I I don't know what figgy pudding is. Mm-hmm. I love right. caroling, and and like it's one of the most miserable things when the pandemic started, and Aww. like it kind of died down and it was around the time that my little sister was at caroling age yeah so she she still hasn't gone caroling ever that's so sad that but is sad we we plan to take her this year that's nice yeah i feel like caroling is only a thing i see in hallmark movies and also in love heart <laughs> <laughs> love heart <laughs> A movie that we hate so much that we made a whole Kofi bonus episode about it. Yep. Uh, Check it out. Yeah. Oh, and my ex fiance booed at the scene because she called it a preview to Radio Company. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, they're making it horrible on first, yeah this, he's a so. bad singer and later when jensen ackles wants to promote his band dean suddenly becomes he's a good singer, a singer. In canon. i thought didn't he's he do a uh, karaoke just with the Lee? good old boys yeah, yeah that's the song i literally just sang it nice yeah was he good or bad in that one i mean he's singing like 
as Jensen Ackles, and I wish he, I wish he would stop, you know? Yeah. I wish he wouldn't. Yeah. So. Same. Uh. So, as they stop saying Silent Night, actual Silent Night starts playing, and we go to a house that's Christmassy, blah, 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 and there's a little kid, and he's walking down the stairs, and he's like, Santa? Santa? Because there's um, sounds on the chimney. And then somebody gets out of the chimney, and it's this, like, bloodied guy. And he, this scene, by the way, is so long. Mm-hmm. It's so long. He goes upstairs. There's shouting in the room. He grabs someone who's like s- wriggling for their life. And he takes this person down the stairs. And then all throughout, like, Silent Night is playing. And there's a scene where he goes up to the kid and the kid is terrified. Like, most of the scene. The kid is confused, but this one scene he's terrified because Santa is leaning towards him. And then what he's actually doing is reaching out for the cookies. Yeah. And then he eats it. And then he takes the dad away. And right. this kid is traumatized for life. Yeah, sorry, kid. Also, we don't see this like evil Santa guy's face. We just see like yeah, yeah, a yeah. clawed red hand. Okay, I'm kind of confused about this because we don't. When we find out who the monster of the week is, like, they don't look like that and we don't see them transform. Right? So, like, I think this, is this guy is just in a costume. Okay. Including the red clawed hand? It's a costume? Maybe... I mean, there's, there's moments in the... Later on where they're, like... You know, Sam lights a flashlight at them. Oh. And, like, the guy... Turns a different face. Oh, so maybe th- okay. there's hints of that going okay. on. Okay, I was playing Scrabble with my ex-fiance while watching this, so I probably missed Did that you win? Part. Did you win? Oh, we don't keep track of points. We win if we're able Ooh. to use all the letters in the bag and actually Ooh. spell out valid words throughout the board. Boo. <laughs> yeah, you I know. have to be competitive. I I don't want to do math. <laughs> <laughs> Major and (laughs) (laughs) proves my point. (laughs) Yeah, uh, so we have Dean questioning the family that got attacked earlier. Uh, so do they ever explain why it's only men who get taken by the gods? Because each time they're anti misogynist. <laughs> so true. No, yeah. I think they were supposed to take the woman as well, but it's it, like they failed, I feel. Huh. Because, but... like, she was being dragged out of bed, is what she said. That's true. But it said that the attacker just knocked her out and then took her husband, so it seemed like she was just attacked to, like, keep her like not fighting when they took the husband because earlier it was like the grandfather and they were interviewing a wife whose husband was taken i don't know maybe it's a lore thing yeah yeah so you know she got dragged out of bed she got knocked out her husband got kidnapped or whatever uh and you know she's having a terrible time and sam goes oh uh hey where'd you get that wreath above the fireplace Uh, Aw, and she's incredibly offended that he would ask about that during (laughs) the worst day of her life. Um, and Sam's just like, yeah, sorry, just curious, what else? And then when they go outside, (laughs) Dean goes, what, you want to look at her shoes next? There's handbags there too. He's so homophobic. He's so so homophobic. He is absolutely calling him gay here. Youch. But, you and know. You know what? Huh? Sam's gayness got them something because that wreath is also the wreath from the other house yep. the other day. So, right. go gay boy, go. Go gay boy, go. And Dean goes like, oh yeah, I noticed that. I was just like making fun of you, you know, like whatever. I'm a big smart boy too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, 
crazy. So, uh, we go back to the motel. And Sam is calling Bobby. And apparently, the... The plants in the wreath are meadow sweet, mm-hmm. which is a very powerful plant in the pagan lore. And it's used for like human sacrifice. So if you put that up your house, it's like, look at me, human sacrifice me now. I want it so bad. So that's what's happening. And that's why people are getting mauled to death. Mm. And this, Dean expresses surprise at the fact that why is it a pagan thing? Isn't Christmas a Jesus holiday? Yeah, he's so fascinating it's to me. Jesus' birthday. Yeah, he's like, he, Jesus was born on the 25th. So why are you lying to me, Sam? Yeah, but on the solar calendar, Sam. This is so fascinating to me because, like, isn't this something that's taught to you from the get go? I do think that. A I lot mean, of maybe people not taught. Think that it's Jesus's birthday, but yeah, I feel like it's pretty common knowledge now. Yeah, maybe again, maybe it's like a difference in time, and it's like now it's super common, but back then people were more conservative about the idea of Christmas. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. but. Yeah, it's all Christmas. Uh, it's all pagan. The Santa, the wreaths, the food, blah blah blah. And uh, I like this because Sam like is revealed to actually know a lot about Christmas. Like he's like Jesus was actually born in the fall. Blah 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 blah. So like I like that detail because you like. It's like a nice contrast to the fact that he doesn't like Christmas and also that he knows a lot about it. Mm. I think that's neat. Yeah. Okay, wait, was Jesus born in the fall? Because, okay, like, it's because of the state of the lambs that... I thought I thought I heard that Jesus was born in the spring because if there were, like, new baby lambs when he was born, that then that was the spring. I don't know. What, what have you heard about when Jesus was born? Well... He was born on Christmas Day. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ, I know nothing. our Savior was born on Christmas Day. This is true. It's so true. Yeah. I mean, I know nothing about the actual Christmas Jesus lore. Mm. I love calling Jesus lore Jesus lore. <laughs> it I think literally that's is. What, that's what we should call like all Bible things, like, Christianity, Catholicism, it's Bible lore. Yeah. Is there a Bible fan wiki page? No, oh my god. Let's look it up. Bible fan wiki. There has got to be, right? Yes! Yeah! Bible.fandom.com. Is it good? Is it good? I think it's. I mean, it's full of, like, people. Sorry, there's a page just called Beautiful Women. <laughs> or, sorry, it's a category <laughs> page and it's under the most popular category pages. <laughs> Who's in there? Mary Magdalene. Um, Ruth. there's Bathsheba, Rachel, Esther, Rachel, Abishag, um, Tamar, yeah. Good for them. I yeah. love beautiful women. What is the unnamed narrator of the Song of Songs? Oh well. We can't have it all. Uh, so Sam and Dean go to the Christmas shop. And Dean tells the guy in there that like, Oh, we were playing Jenga at the Walsh's right before one of their people in the family got taken and eaten <laughs> by a monster. And this guy... Sam wouldn't shut up about the Christmas wreath. So, Sam, go tell him about the Christmas wreath. I feel like this is also like, uh, this guy is gay. Oh, definitely. That's so funny. Definitely. It definitely is. The same way that, like, what was it? In, like, Playthings, Dean was like, oh, yeah, Sam loves dolls. He collects dolls all the time. Yeah. Yeah. 
He's so mean. Mm. But yeah, the shopkeeper is like, well, I sell so many of them. And Sam explains what he's looking for. And the so shopkeeper says, it was says yummy. That, yeah. <laughs> Why did he say that? I think he's trying to gauge if the shopkeeper is like the person who's like taking people and eating them. Oh. Yeah, but he's not. Yeah. Uh, he he says that it's sold out already, the wreath. And Sam is like, oh, why did you make it with meadow sweet? And he's like, I didn't make it. It was this lady from like somewhere in the neighborhood. She made it and gave it to me for free. So they have a new suspect. Yep. So they go back to the motel and yeah, Sam reveals that a meadow sweet wreath would usually cost a couple hundred dollars. Is this like I an extremely that. rare plant? Or whatever, I guess I know that like proper floral arrangements from a florist can cost like $80, so I guess that tracks. So, and Dean says, remember that wreath dad brought home that one year? And Sam says, oh, the one he stole from a liquor store? Which I think is the only cool thing that John has ever done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently it's made of beer cans. Yeah, yeah, and Dean is very fond of it. He wants to find one just like it. But this is not so much a fond memory for Sam. Uh, and he asks Dean, like, why do you care so bad about Christmas right now? Uh, and Dean's like, why are you so against it? Were your childhood memories that traumatic? Uh, and... You know, Sam's is like, no, that's not it. It's just that you, like, usually don't care about Christmas. And Dean says, well, yeah, this is my last year. And, uh... yeah. And Sam says, like, yeah, I know, which is why I can't do Christmas. Because it would be really difficult for me to, like, have a celebration and pretend everything's okay when I know that next Christmas you'll be dead. And both of them just sit there being sad. And then we yeah. get a flashback, baby. Sam is, like, sitting on the couch waiting for Dean to come home in the motel room. That is their home at this point. And uh, so Dean walks in and he's like, I got you dinner. And Sam tells him, I know you keep a gun under your pillow. And Dean looks at the gun under his pillow. <laughs> and he's like, and no, goes, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. Look at this gun I'm looking at right now. It's not there. <laughs> and I don't keep a gun under my pillow. But he basically says, like, don't, don't look at my stuff. And Sam says, I know what that does, too. And then he takes out the journal. And he hands it over to Dean. And Dean is like, why did you read that? That's You shouldn't have. And read Sam, dad's diary yeah dad's diary and Sam asks are monsters real and then Dean goes gaslight gate you yeah, real boss real. you're fucking crazy <laughs> god and Sam's like no just be honest with me just tell me and Dean goes okay I'll tell you but don't tell dad I told you Monsters are real, and Dad is a hero. He's super cool. He's the coolest guy on Earth. Uh, he hunts them down and kills them. Also, like, Dean yeah. says, like, if Dad finds out that you read his journal, he's gonna, he's gonna kick, kick your, your ass. ass. And then he says, yeah. I'll kick your ass if you tell Dad that I told you about monsters. It's just, it's just sad that corporal punishment is such a thing in their childhood. Yeah. Yeah, and Dean is like, yeah, monsters are real. And Sam's like, wait, why would dad, why would monsters be real if dad keeps on saying that the monsters under my bed are not real? And Dean is like, yeah, because he already, he already checked under your bed. So he knows they're not real this time. Mm -hmm. And Sam asks about Mary. Well, because he read well, it. No, wait, it in you the forgot book. the is Santa real thing. That was the whole point of the No! <laughs> and then he asked, 
Is Santa real? And Dean goes, no. Santa isn't real. <laughs> He's eight years old. I feel like this is an appropriate time to learn that Santa is not real. But according to you, this is super big deal. So like, maybe not. <laughs> it was a big deal for me. <laughs> God. And then, I like the thing is, it's not just me. I don't know anyone in my life who believed in Santa. Oh yeah, no, I was definitely like my sister was like probably one of the latest people to know that Santa wasn't real. And then, yeah, I feel like I I was also pretty late in the game, but my parents were like just really good at keeping it up, I guess. They were like, "We'll tell you like we'll tell you some more about Santa when you're 15." They said when you're 15. They were planning to hold out until I was 15. <laughs> You're like a full grown person at age 15. Yeah. Like you're a human being at that point. <laughs> Children are also human beings, but yes, like <laughs> right, like the the logic no, like, centers of my brain. Yeah, or you're whatever. able to grasp shit at that point. So maybe right. that's why they were waiting until 15. <laughs> Still, that's really late. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Sam asks about Mary, and they got mom, right? And he says, if they got mom, they could get dad, they could get us. Mm -hmm. And Dean keeps reassuring him, but he keeps repeating this. So like, he could, they could get us, they could get dad, because they got mom. Yeah. And then Dean just reassures him that dad's going to be fine. He's all right. We're going to be all right. And dad's gonna be here for Christmas, so... Sam goes, I know. wanna go to sleep. Aww. And then he goes to sleep crying, and the whole yeah. time I was like, why are you crying? And I get that this is like a big deal for him, and it's an emotional moment, but like, stop crying. No! You're such a loser. No! Stop. He's eight! <laughs> He's a little I think baby. Maybe because he doesn't look eight. Maybe because he looks older than eight. I'm like, I fail to, you know, like, yeah. see him as a kid. Because he looks like 11. Like, oh. maybe 12. Okay, you have a six year old sister, so you know what little kids look like. I've not yeah. seen a child in so long. Like,. I'll see a 19-year-old playing a 14-year-old, and I'll be like, yeah, that's a 14-year-old. That's what they look like. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. Maybe I am, like, the special case of someone who knows what children look like. Yeah, exactly. Like, to me, like, Sam's definitely eight. <laughs> yeah. He's and eight it's in spirit. It's very sad. I mean, okay, like, if you found out that... I, if you as a full-grown adult, like, found out that, like monsters were like for sure a hundred percent real and killed your mom like wouldn't that be upsetting like wouldn't that be a little bit scary <laughs> <laughs> i think like the the fear of that it's gonna get our dad and he obviously loves john because mm -hmm. he's you know he wants to give him a gift blah, yeah blah, blah. right and john's out there hunting like right now yeah and it really brings up the idea that like Maybe hunting is selfish because you're putting like so much stress to the people around you who know about it. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. But Yeah. Maybe. Ugh. Does Dean I know that Dean doesn't believe John will be back for Christmas, but does he believe any of the other stuff he's saying? I think he believes that John will be back for Christmas. Wait, really? Honestly. Oh. Yeah, I think he genuinely believed. And then when he figured out that, like, it's not gonna happen, he just stole presents. Because, oh, like, so you think this you think this entire time he was like, Dad's not gonna be here. I feel like if Dad was not gonna be here, he's gonna be like, no, Dad's not gonna be here. Like, he's not gonna lie to Sam. I, so I do he believe that he believes He lied to Sam everything. a lot this episode. <laughs> No, but about that, you think he'd lie about John arriving home for Christmas? Yeah. I but think like, he would. The lie doesn't fly because Sam will know eventually. 
Well, he, later John doesn't show up and Dean does lie about it. He says he was here while uh, you were asleep. Well, to me, he yeah. did believe it. And then, like, he also was disappointed. Okay, yeah, I get that, I guess. Because he says, like, oh, he'll be back just like he was back last time. Or he's always back, right? Doesn't he say something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so maybe he does believe that Christmas is a special day where John doesn't abandon them in motel rooms and then he was proven wrong on this one day. Yeah. Yeah. Does Do you think Dean believes that they're safe from the monsters? I think, I think he really believes that John is, like, a good hunter, etc., etc. Okay, but... What happened in Something Wicked happened yeah, before the this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And, okay, yeah. just- so Sam just doesn't remember being literally attacked by a monster already. He did, did not see the monster. Oh, he was asleep? He was asleep, yeah. But, like, afterwards, John was all, like, being, like- he was being, like, very overprotective and clearly something had happened. But I don't know, when you're, like, what? five, like, when you don't like, remember anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Alright. Ugh. Well, poor kids. Uh, we cut to Sam and Dean going to the house of the person who made the wreath. Uh, so they knock, and it's, like, this hallmark old people couple, where they're, like, white people with, like, specific outfits and ways of talking that I feel like stopped being in real life for like perhaps a few decades before this episode aired but yeah they're very yeah, like hallmark 1950s maybe yeah yeah so they're like hi like we just came over because we thought your wreaths were so neat uh and you sold out of all of them before we could get one so can we get another one from you and she's like, oh no. Uh, and they ask about the meadow sweet, and she just says, oh, it smells really nice. Blah, blah, blah. And then her husband comes over, he offers them some food. Dean reaches for it, and Sam slaps his hand away. Uh, and they go back to the motel where Dean is like sharpening up some wooden stake and Sam reveals that the that the people who live in the house, the Kerrigans, they lived in Seattle before this year, which is where our opening kidnapping happened. And also he noticed that there was a lot of pagan stuff inside of their house and also their like all their furniture is covered in plastic yeah yeah fun stuff oh also specifically i think that's a very nice yeah, detail i that agree their couch is covered in plastic right like they are not living here the way that most people would live in a place also this the wooden stakes are evergreen specifically because that's what bobby said would get them yeah, and like I, this GIF is like, I think there's a post floating around that's like, he's he's sharpening the steak, and then none of the wood shavings are going into the bucket under him, <laughs> and it's like it looks so stupid because there's just wood everywhere except for the trash bin. Love that. Yeah, are there like outsider POV fix about like the people who have to clean the motels after seventeen <laughs> leave? There should be. There should be. Like, I want them to go back to season one. And, like, when the person who's cleaning... I know they discover, like, John's room. But, like, the person who has to clean that, I want to know his perspective. I want to yeah. know their perspective. There should be an episode where there's, like, Ghost of Christmas Past, Present, and Future for them. And, like, the whole point is clean your motel rooms before you leave. <laughs> I mean... There's actually one episode, right? Lebanon that was supposed to be an outside like, an outside perspective. Mm. Which I wish they did that. I wish 
JDM wasn't available or some other shit. Like, yeah. I, that would have fucked so good. No, that's not how what people <laughs> think. <laughs> fucked so hard? That's yeah. Hard, yeah. Yeah. I mean, everyone fucks anyway, better when JDM isn't yeah. available. <laughs> I love how you said that so quickly, like you're trying to get it in before I say my next <laughs> sentence. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so finally, Sam and Dean go to the Carrigan house. And as they enter, they see the couch and it is covered in plastic. And Dean is like, see, it's covered in plastic. And then they go down to the basement, which Sam finds. And there's blood everywhere. There's like weird shit. There's a bag of a person that's yeah. like still alive. They're like, they don't update us on this person ever Yeah, again. I don't even know if they rescue this person. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I sure hope they did. But also, there's a strong suggestion that they just forgot about him. Yeah, because they were, because Sam was like, gotta run back and put up the Christmas decorations. Meanwhile, a man is dying. Yeah. Anyway, Sam gets attacked by the lady, and Dean gets attacked by the guy. And, like, the guy, like, smashes his head against the wall. And then the lady smashes Sam's head against the wall. But before that, Sam flashes a flashlight at the guy. And the guy kind of changes appearance. Mm. So it's like, ooh, they're monsters. Mm. But yeah, they pass out and they wake up. And they're tied down to chairs back to back in a kitchen. Yeah. And in like a dining hall. And... The two people are, like, walking around with bowls and shit and tools. And they're, like, talking about how they're pagan gods. And it's so horrible because people don't respect them anymore. And there was a time where they ate millions or something or thousands or something. And now they just eat five. And isn't that so swell? You know what it is? Yeah. For them. Honestly, I feel like they're doing pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you have to eat five people a year to survive, then, like, I don't know, eat five people a year to survive. Yeah. Your interview with the vampire tendencies <laughs> are coming out. Right. Okay, also, doesn't the the man tell Sam, oh, now, don't get all wet. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> Maybe that's like a turn of phrase back in the day. Yeah, because they're old yeah. timey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, they start doing the ritual, which is like they put um the meadow sweet wreaths around their necks, and they like slice their arm, and then they get one of Sam's fingernails. Yes. It's such a graphic scene. Yeah, you see it the whole time. They do not cut away. At all. Yeah. It's really good. And then they're about to get Dean's teeth, well, tooth, I guess, mm -hmm. when somebody doorbells. Yeah, which was and... so rude. Like, me and my ex say booed that Sam has to suffer the fingernail removal when Dean gets to keep his teeth. Like, okay. <laughs> I mean, the fingernail will grow back. Yeah, and you the can tooth go to a not. dentist. They can meet Garth. You can, to you get him around they could have met Garth for a thousand earlier. dollars? They could have met Garth earlier. Garth would have given it to Dean for free. We would have had Garth uh. starting from season three if they had just allowed that tooth to be taken out of Dean's sad little mouth. Exactly. Does Garth die in Supernatural? I don't no, right? remember. Yeah. Well, I hope he doesn't. I'll yeah, be so he'd sad if go he to dies. purgatory and that he would goes suck. to purgatory. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I like I haven't thought about Supernatural's ending for a long time, mm -hmm. and now, right now that you mentioned that he's going to purgatory, it all just like came flashing back in my head. Yeah. And 
I am so pissed still at the way Supernatural ends. But we'll get to it when we get to it. Yeah. Right now, we're talking about Season 3, Episode 8 of Very Supernatural. We sure are. Yeah. And uh, the the person in by the door is like, Oh, here's some fruitcake. Oh, by the way. And she starts talking about like random ass things. Mm-hmm. And they're like, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then when they leave, they, like, throw the, the cake on the floor. And, and stomp then they on it. go back. Yeah, they stomp on it. They go back to the dining hall. Sam and Dean are not there anymore. Sam and Dean lock the doors on them. And, like, keep them there inside by, like, I don't know, just, like, blocking the door. Yeah, but just so the, wild to me. Because these are pagan the gods. gods. But, you know, yeah. Sam and Dean are just so muscular. <laughs> exactly. And eventually, they go to the Christmas tree. They rip out some branches from it. And there's a f- and the two escape from the dining hall. They fight. They get stabbed. Wait, they die. Oh my god, wait. We, t- we forgot about the earlier scene when... Um... Like the the woman like cuts Dean and he yells bitch. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so funny. well, not only that he yells bitch and then the the yes. lady goes, oh, whenever I feel like cursing, I prefer to say fudge. Yeah. And Dean says like, what is it? Like, like he's like, oh, I remember that. And then if later, you fudging touch me again. Oh, fudging, I'll kill fudging you. kill you. I love that. Oh, best scene. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but back back to this later scene, which is less funny. No, it's your turn. Oh. Okay, so, right, they have them locked in, and Sam and Dean are... Oh, <laughs> I already what? said this. Okay. I already said this. Where are we? <laughs> We're done with the scene. It's like the epilogue. Wait, you talked about them killing them already? Yeah. How did I miss that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Um, so we get to a flashback. Uh, you know, of that night. Sam, after crying himself to sleep, Dean wakes him up. And he's all like, Oh my god, like, dad was here, and he brought, like, this Christmas tree, and these presents. Uh, and Sam goes, like, why didn't he try to wake me up? And Dean goes, oh, he tried to, like, a thousand times, but you just kept snoring. Um, he's like, I told you he would come and give us Christmas. It's all very sad. Yeah, so Sam runs over to open his gift and the first one is a sapphire barbie and Dean goes dad probably thinks you're a girl trans Sam writes again uh and Sam literally says shut up and then throws it on the ground like Barbie's it's a sapphire fun. barbie doll it, that, that that's a fun. fucking that's fucking so expensive yeah, like, even if you don't want it, you can try to sell it. Yeah. Go on eBay, dude. Yeah. And then he opens the other present, and it's, like, a stick with, like, confetti on it, or... It's, like, a shiny tassel stick. I don't really know what you It's do a baton. It. Oh, a baton, right. Uh, and Sam's like, these aren't from Dad. He did not come here. And he's like, yeah, he did. Uh, but, you know, Sam does not believe him. And he asks Dean where he got all of this stuff. And Dean says, oh, he just stole them from, like, a nice house on the street. Did he have to break in? How did he do this? Was there a window open? Maybe. Or maybe they were holding a party and he, like, was able to get in by pretending to be one of the kids friends and then he like hid them in are you serious i don't know (laughs) during christmas you're gonna spend your party at somebody else's house people have like christmas dinner parties don't they (laughs) 
I don't know. Yeah. I mean, this is Christmas Eve. Is Christmas Eve a big deal? Um, I kind of, I guess. Yeah, exactly. So, like, you spend it in your house. Sometimes. Yeah, uh, and he goes, I swear, I didn't know they were chick presents. <laughs> so Every time Supernatural says chick, I'm like, what a fascinating choice of word. Yeah. Truly a fascinating choice of word. Yeah. Truly, truly. So... And Dean's like, I like I promised Dad would have wanted to be here, and Sam goes, if he's alive. <laughs> <laughs> I've known about Dad being a hunter for five hours, and I am now wish for his death. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, Dean goes like, oh, of course he's alive. He's dead. And then the present day, he's literally dead right now. So real. Uh, and Sam hands the present that he wrapped for John to Dean, and he says, take this. And Dean's like, no, that's for Dad. And Sam says, Dad lied to me. I want you to have it. Aww. He also lied to he you. He also <laughs> lied to you. I guess in the end, Dean told the truth, and, and John has not had that opportunity yet. Um, yeah. So Dean looks quite touched about this, and he unwraps it, and it's the Samulet. Woo! And he puts it on. I okay. What the fuck is the Samulet lore? Did Bobby know it could find God when he gave it to <laughs> Sam? I doubt it. Yeah. I doubt it. Okay. Right, and this is a very sweet scene because in Something Wicked, which is the only other, like, flashback episode we get so far, we also see Sam giving Dean the gift in, like, the Lucky Charms cereal box, right? Mm hmm So, like, this- It's his love yeah, language. this is Sam's love language, at least when they were younger, and, I don't know, it's sweet. I enjoy it. Yeah. So we're back to present day. And this is the scene. Yeah. <laughs> this is the scene that drove me to tears. Uh, we we go back to the motel, and it's Sam, and he's waiting for Dean to arrive. And Dean opens the door, and it's a holiday scene. It's a Christmas scene. Sam has decorated the place, and he's like trying to be upbeat and happy. And he's like, "Oh, look, it's Christmas!" And Dean's like, "Oh, you changed your mind?" And he's like, "Yeah, yeah." yeah. Try the eggnog, and then Dean tries the eggnog, and it's super strong. So he makes a face, and he's like, "Yeah, this is good." And then they sit down, and he's like, "Oh, let's have a seat. Let's do Christmas stuff." And they exchange gifts. Yeah. And both of them got the gifts in like a gas store nearby. Yeah. And for for Dean, gave Sam skin mags and yeah, it's called frolic. shaving cream. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Frolic. I this is a hilarious gift because they literally live in the same motel room and in the same yeah. car. Like at what point is Sam going to get to enjoy these the way they were meant to be enjoyed? Like is he gonna go, Hey Dean, can you step out for an hour? I just wanna really appreciate these gifts you gave me for Christmas. Like what is he gonna do? Yeah, but it's a funny gift. Yeah. And Dean got um a f uh, <laughs> like an energy bar and some motor oil change for her baby. Mm -hmm. And he's like, food for me and food for my baby or something yeah. like that. Fuel for my baby. Yeah. Super cute. And like the entire scene feels so somber. Mm -hmm. Like it feels so sad. I feel like they it put like a little so foggy filter on it or whatever to give it that nostalgia feel. Yeah. It also like have yourself a merry little Christmas display. Yeah, and it's which Ella I think is a very nice touch. Version. Yeah, I think it's a very nice touch. And they say Merry Christmas to each other, and then Dean is like silent and sam is like silent and you think they're gonna talk about it but sam just goes you want to watch the game and he goes yeah i and love the way men the love 
<laughs> I don't know why I reacted that viscerally <laughs> to that phrase. It's a good but poem. yeah, they don't. It's a good poem, but like this is not the yeah. This is not what it's trying to say. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. Like this is like uh, this is men just, do not talk just, about their yeah. feelings ever. Yeah. Yeah. What is there yeah. a Christmas sports game that I'm not aware of? I know there's a Thanksgiving think, sports game. Is there a Christmas sports game? I think there's a thing where, like, in the UK at least, I've heard that like they have sports game during Christmas Day. Hmm. I I never understand that like. I don't know how that's possible. Yeah, shouldn't the athletes have the day off? Yeah. I mean, I guess so. But in the Philippines, like, most of the big athlete games are, like, um, university. Mm. University games. So, like, or at least at my age group, that's the ones we watch. So, like, of course, those are not going to be present during the holidays because the students are on holiday but mm. so i don't know if it happens anywhere else yeah i don't know either due to n- never watching sports yeah so that's the end of the episode yeah what are our post episode thoughts um i'm thinking about a post that i saw that was like after dean's death Ruby finds Sam crying over a bunch of porn over magazines. Skin Max, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. Love that. I think, um, I honestly, I think we didn't do the episode justice. Hmm. I feel like it's better than we're making it out to be. I don't think we're being mean about it. No, we're not being mean, but we're just also not able to express like what makes it so emotional or at least what makes it so emotional for me i'm not able to express it in a way that like i feel like i could convey yeah and i'm not able to express how cute little baby sam actors is which i think is the main reason i was emotional for this episode yeah i mean i was full-on crying when like dean entered and he was like Oh, you, you decorated. I, I, I was like... <laughs> like, I was full-on crying. So... Yeah. Best line, worst line. Uh, yeah. I really liked Sam's Whose Childhood Are You Remembering line. Because I feel like... Like, Dean is hurt by this because he, like, tried to make Sam's christmases and stuff nice and sam still views them as really bad because their dad abandoned them in a motel um whereas like sam is just like recognizing that the reality of the situation sucks despite the efforts that dean made to make it not suck and yeah i don't know it it makes me emo yeah i think my best line has got to be um I don't even know. You how about your worst line? What's your worst line? Um Huh. I think that in the wreath store the guy says about Sam, Oh, he's a fussy one, isn't he? And that's like another way to call Sam gay that I found especially annoying. Here's my worst line. Yeah. Missile my toe. No! <laughs> Chestnut, <laughs> egg my knock. <laughs> Wait, sorry. What did they say about chestnuts? Rest my chest. Roast my chest. Wait, literally, you could just say nut on my chest. And that's too forward. I guess Roast so. Anyway, also for context, this is from the Christmas themed porn that the Santa was watching. Because <laughs> I don't think we quoted that egg- fully. <laughs> Egg my nog. I love that. I love that. I don't know what my best line is. Probably like when Sam was like, baby Sam was Aww. like, they're gonna get mom, they're gonna get dad, and then they're gonna get us. Because mm. one, true. Yeah, that is the two, order. Two, 
too, it's like that kind of like kid logic. Right. That, you know how like kids sometimes they say things and you're like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you don't interact with kids. But like kids tend to, tend to have like a way of thinking. I've like, based on my experience, that like kind of like, they're, it's so straightforward and it's like, like kids like do have a logical way of thinking. Sometimes it's just misguided because they don't know a lot of things. Mm. But and in a way, like I feel like Dean thinks of this as that that like Sam doesn't know that that is so cool and so strong and so smart. Yeah. So he thinks that he's gonna get us. But like the reality of the situation is this is true. Mm-hmm. It's just Sam doesn't. Re- uh, it's just Dean doesn't realize it because he is the one who's like ignorant about things. All right. He's the one who has like misconceptions. So I like that. Mm. I feel like they're just two children. They're just kids. Yeah. And this is just how kids think. Yeah. Oh, and when Dean's all like, our dad's a hero, blah, blah, blah. Like, he genuinely believes that. Like, like I think when, like, John started taking him along on hunts, he was, like, genuinely really excited and proud about it. And it wasn't until later when he was like, huh, wasn't it kind of fucked up that I was given a gun yeah. to put under my bed as an 11-year-old? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. How about sad. spreadsheet? I feel like this one mm-hmm. doesn't have a lot of sexism and racism, but the the but it's a, t- a tad so funny. But it's not like direct is the thing, right? I, is it not? I, okay, what is it's direct homophobia? Okay, at this point? you're right. You're right. Not everything can be. Could you get any more gay? Sometimes just saying, "Oh, you wanted Maybe to look th- at her handbags," is enough. I agree. What's what's the point that we gave? Oh, you wanna? Could you be any more gay? We gave it a three, right? I feel I, like no, we, we gave it a two. a two. We did not give it okay. a three. So we we must give this a one. Okay, that sounds good. I will note that. Okay, down. IMDb, IMDb rating. I think this is high. Oh, for sure. Like, I feel like everyone was, like, cried at this or whatever. Um, huh. I don't know. He's dying. Eight. I think, like, it's finally sinking in on me that he is dying. Yeah. I know they shove it in your face every episode, but this is the one that made me emotional enough to be like, oh my god, he's dying. That's true. I feel like I, like it, I did not care that he was dying. And I still don't care that he's dying, but it, it is more than it was before. Um, I would say 8.9. Okay, I was going to go 8.8, 8, I think. Okay, let's check. <gasps> oh no, it's an 8.6, so we overshot. Okay. Let's see what people are saying. Amazing episode. Awesome show. Santa Claus is coming to town. A fudging great episode. I love that. I love all those titles. Um, oh my god, there's fighting in the comments because like... Oh? Oh, I love like, that. I I don't know. So there's... Oh my god. So there's this one reviewer named Amanda. Okay. And everyone... It's like either agreeing with Amanda or disagreeing with Amanda. Mm-hmm. But I can't find Amanda. Huh. Did Amanda delete? Who is Amanda? Maybe the Amanda is like a reviewer outside of IMDb. Maybe so. Oh my god, we're discovering lore on IMDb Supernatural. We sure are. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. What? <laughs> what? I'm so sorry. I'm laughing again. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna calm down. There's one to review titled Why the- <laughs> I can't What? <laughs> Wait, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh there's one. <laughs> I feel so stupid. I'm so sorry. Okay. <coughs> Why this young Dean called <laughs> young Sam? What? <laughs> wait. 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 <laughs> Why this young Dean call young
lang Sam Devin. Kevin? <laughs> Is there a line there? I also was surprised. <laughs> like, I didn't mention it in the episode, but like, there's a line in the show where, um, like, D- Dean goes, let's get you to, let's, let's just, like, go to sleep, Devin, or something. Oh. <laughs> like, go ahead, Devin. <laughs> and oh. his commenter is like, <laughs> why? Why is he named Devin? I'm gonna read the review. This is by Mike Abrams. Okay. Did anyone else notice that at the end of the episode, when Young Sam is waking up, and Young Dean tells him to get the presents. He says, go ahead, Devin. Who is Devin? He calls him Sam later at the last scene. The actor's name is Colin. Maybe he said Colin. Whichever, someone should have got it. Pretty embarrassing. <laughs> Everyone else noticed this? And whoever said that the facts are wrong? This is supernatural, not 60 minutes. Oh, okay. The last part is about Amanda again. Okay. Because I think Amanda complained about the paganism being inaccurate. Okay, that's valid. I didn't do my background research on this one. Okay, but this one is like, this is to Amanda. The writers did the research. I think it's you who has totally missed the point. Huh. Yeah, wait, where is Amanda? I don't know. I keep on Who's looking for it. this mysterious Amanda? I can't Amanda? find Amanda. Like, it'd be good This one is, read. you really need to calm down. Amanda, you've got to calm down. <laughs> it's just deviant. <laughs> Only a TV show. <laughs> it's only a TV show. Amanda, was it really that bad? Amanda Bickle, it's just a TV show. You have to remember that. Paganism is a made-up religion. Well, I suppose they all are, but there is something extremely artificial about the recent resurrection of pagan beliefs. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know, and I am not the person to comment on this Amanda debacle. Yeah, same, but I do think it's so First funny all, that I... all of these reviews are just being like, Amanda, shut up. Yeah. Who is Devin? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make that the title of the episode, <laughs> even though when I was reading it, I was completely incomprehensible. <laughs> Sounds good. There's a review called Not That Mean to Pagans. Yeah, and it's a response to Amanda. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, somebody replied about the Devin. Oh yeah, he said dive in. Mike Abrams, he didn't say Devin, he said dive in. <laughs> Did he really say dive in? Yeah, like get to the I presence. Remember, yeah, I heard dive I remember in, in the episode. He did say Devin to me, and I was like, okay, Devin. I thought he was making a reference, like, oh, Devin. Mm. <laughs> this is the most amusing uh, review, user review segment yeah. that I've ever seen. Okay, so yeah, one person said... Dean was a jackass as a kid. Sam was a whiner. I felt absolutely nothing about their flashbacks. Whoever wrote this should be thrown out on the street. (laughs) Okay. They did? Oh my god. Okay, this last- well, they made him showrunner, so... (laughs) Sorry, garbage can kitty. Okay, sorry, this little last review is titled, The Movie is Also Anti-Christian. And it starts with, I agree with Amanda that the movie is anti-pagan. Um, and then... He... (laughs) I am agnostic, and I consider myself fair to others who are religious. Every Christmas, I see so many movies, shows, and stories that defile the original meaning of Christmas <laughs> as it is understood to devout Christians. Anti-Christianity is akin to racism. <laughs> ah! I need everyone, I need everyone who is listening up until now, even after everything, to go to the user review <laughs> section of A Very Supernatural Christmas. Like, we need you to do it. It's a fucking mess! There's 23 <laughs> reviews and every single one of them is wild. Yeah. Jesus. 
Right. Okay, yeah, I've also been thinking about how, like, if any of our listeners, like, wanted to be on the show, they would just have to leave an IMDb review and we would read it. For a future, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, you know, that's something to think about. You could be like, oh, also we record this, like, two weeks in the past, so you can't yes. do, like, one week before. Yeah. yeah, do it like, so. yeah, the last episode that released and then add two, and then you can leave a review on that one. But we are mean to basically every review we read, so <laughs> I understand if you don't want to put yourself in the line of fire. <laughs> okay, oh my god, my throat hurts from laughing so hard at the Devin line. <laughs> So that's it for this episode of Bustation Beauties. Next week we will be discussing wait season uh three episode nine Malayus Maleficarum. Ooh, Leave movie. us a rating or review wherever you get your podcast. Follow us on social media. We are on Twitter at twitter.com slash beauties podcast. Or sorry, is it beauties podcast? Yes. Um yeah. okay. We are on Twitter at twitter.com slash beautiespodcast and on Tumblr at bustyasianbeautiespod.tumblr.com. Our official tag is babpod, B-A-B-pod, and thank you to everyone who's donated to our Kofi at ko-fi.com slash bustyasianbeautiespod. Uh, if you have any feedback, comments, or inquiries, email us at bustyasianbeautiespod at gmail.com. See you guys next time! Bye! Bye.